That was not in any realm of imagination a satisfying ending. Both of our major antagonistic forces in this series are still very much alive and kicking and there's no resolution in sight. Saitama hasn't even acknowledged the existence of Garo yet and nobody really knows about the Oni King in the Saitama circle. In saying that though, if this was like a mid-season finale, I would be totally fine with that. It's just the fear that it's going to be over a year. If it's over, over four years. Yeah, but anything over a year is unforgivable for me. Yeah. As in next spring 2020, it comes back and we get season three, totally fine. But if it's two years, years 18 months 24 months or god forbid 48 months that's going to be an absolute write-off of a season it really depends on how quickly they can follow up on this the whole season was just bringing this thing to simmer without any payoff and it's totally fine if we're getting multiple seasons and this is just one leg of the spider but if this is four years in waiting this was a very unsatisfactory ending with the caveat that there was very enjoyable moments within it and actually seeing such like knock that centipede spark out was very entertaining and that's what i paid for right i came to see him knock a big thing out and he knocked a big thing out yeah but by the end of this season i wasn't paying for that anymore i wasn't expecting that i was here for the garo arc i was here to see garo's story come to a head with him at least going toe to toe with somebody with bang but it was like this half ass He's already on his way to the grave, you know, got one foot in the grave. He's already been picked on by all these other heroes. There was no payoff, like you said. If there's a payoff coming in a later season, I guess. But even then, that's not really okay for me. It's okay to leave it on a cliffhanger if you give me what I want first. And I just didn't get that, really. It suffers from that middle movie syndrome, which is fine if it builds to something else. But I felt this whole season was building to something, but it was unclear of what it was building toward. I felt the pain pacing of the season was very haphazard. We'll spend some time with this person, spend some time with this person. Still didn't spend the time with the person I wanted to see the most, which was Mumun Rider. Needed to spend more time <laughs> with the Rider, man. Before we break into maybe a more in-depth discussion on season two of One Punch Man, how about we go for our gradings for the season and overall give our justifications for giving that grade or rationale for giving that grade? I'll start. I give the season a B. It was entertaining at time, but I think it missed what the first season was trying to accomplish. I still enjoyed the fights and I enjoyed King and I enjoyed Garo to some degree. So it wasn't bad watch for me, but it just missed the mark. Okay, so a B. That's totally not what I expected you to say. What about you, Takakun? All right, so it's really hard to give a grade to One Punch Man without factoring in that it's a season two because it's just so tied to that experience you know if it was a show on its own it would be good and i could maybe give it a grade but i can't knowing that it came from season one so what season one did was something that had never been done before it was the funniest show that looked that good and the best looking show that was that funny and it was that combination of that one two punch that one two punch if you will of slapstick comedy and intense sakuga that made it such a joy to watch. And when you transition from season one to season two, it lost the edge of that humor. The joke had been played out and I don't even think that they played up that one joke to the extent that they could have in season two. And the animation quality drastically dipped because of the change to JC staff. And so it kind of lost everything that made it special. And it just ended up being this kind of humdrum, interesting enough story because of course it's the same story adapted from one. And they've got some source material to work with here but the execution by the studio to make it an anime i'm gonna have to give it just a c it's just average humdrum humdrum if it was independent of another season it might be a b show but it's just that expectation and the disappointment that goes along with it that makes a c for me okay so we got a b and a c can i give it an a just for the abc yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or d definitely not gonna give it d for me it's a b because i had to ask myself the question was i entertained are you not entertained and the answer was that was yes i was entertained was i engaged pretty much from start to finish yes i was did they introduce some new characters and new elements to that world which i thought are intriguing from a narrative level yes they did did they let me down in places absolutely none of the fights felt essential as hype as the final punch from saitama at the end of the season was this wasn't like boros they didn't have the build up like boros had and there was no level two fights that felt as impactful as the Mezogol fight felt in season one that was the best fight in the season and it didn't involve saitama and the nature of one punch in general being what it is the best fights are always going to be the other characters just like this season the best fights were the other characters they just didn't feel like they were on the same level as the battles from season one so i couldn't give it an a in good conscience on an entertainment level there was humor there still it was all fine and dandy and it looked fine more often than not like when it was bad it was not good but it didn't feel egregious like it potentially could have been after episode two episode two was a bit of a low point i feel comfortable enough saying it's a b it is a disappointment and that's the biggest issue with it really more so than anything tech 
technical. It's just that it feels like a disappointment. I think the biggest indictment you had there was the word fine. It's fine. It was okay. And to me, it, fine it, is a C. Fine's a B. It just has weight on it because the first season was so revolutionary and so deconstructive and amazing. That fine is not what we wanted, not what we expected. And because of that, fine is its own indictment to some degree. Yeah. I mean, I will concede that it was entertaining and I was engaged the whole way through. And so maybe it could be like a C plus for me, but it's really just the fact that it lacked all of the things that made One Punch Man so great. Even the satirical nature of the show and like poking fun at the shonen genre, I thought that was leveled down a lot in this season. There was moments of humor, but I think none of it had me like laughing. I think I chuckled maybe four times throughout the whole season. I was never glued to the screen because of a fight scene to the point I could not blink. I could not look away like I was in season one for a lot of episodes. It wasn't just the Boros fight. It was nearly every time they started throwing punches because they were just so beautiful to watch. And here it was sometimes I would purposefully look away just hoping that I, I would miss that awkward movement or something just to keep the dream alive in my head of this amazing show. But when all is said and done, season two is a disappointment. So let me ask this question then. Let me ask the question. Would you have preferred it just to be a one season anime in terms of they captured some magic you really felt the dedication and the joy of the staff that was doing it you felt they wanted this to succeed in season one rather than just pumping out a tv show i really feel if it had just been a one season show it would have been the legendary show so you're saying that sometimes you get a passionate staff and sometimes you get a jc staff sometimes you get a staff infection right yeah sometimes (laughs) you get a staff infection this is a pretty good question and i think hits right to the heart of the matter it's called one punch man it's a gag when all said and done, right? It was a well done, very well polished, funny piece of culture the first season. And I don't think it really needed more than that, to be honest. So I could have seen it as just a one shot because after the Boros fight, really, it didn't seem like there would be any more, especially after we waited four years and I wasn't really itching for more One Punch Man. It was just like this legendary moment that could shine in history. I could see where some people would want more adapted because there is more story written but I don't think it needs it. And especially if this is the alternative, right? If the alternative is like, well, you get more, but it's not going to be as good. I think a more interesting question might be, what if it was just one season? Or what if Madhouse did a season two of the same caliber? Of course I'd take that, but that's just not reality. So between what we got and basically the alternative not getting that, I think it maybe would be a stronger brand or a stronger IP if it had not gotten a second season. Yeah, I can see that logic. And I had thought about bringing that up as a question. What do you think the score would have been if you had the same director and Madhouse had done it again? Right. Do you think the pieces of the story were there for sturdier hands and a more solid foundation? Could they have turned this into something resembling season one or something akin quality-wise to season one? And I think, yes, they could have. Yeah. I think it rides and dies on technical things. And if you can clean up the technical things, will the story be entertaining enough to carry it on? And I think it was. I thought the story was entertaining. Stuff that let it down was legacy and technical technical stuff. Legacy, it is what it is. You can't undo what season one did. You just gotta try and make that difficult second album its own thing and be great for its own reasons. And for whatever reason, they just fell short of that mark. I don't think they missed the mark. It wasn't a chasm-sized gap. They just fell short enough that it feels like a massive letdown for a lot of people. I'm not ready to wash my hands of it. The story still entertains me and the characters are still engaging. Is it essential going forward? I don't think so. It's lost a lot of its luster and a lot of its shine. Going into the third season, there's really two ways that it can go at this point. It can continue to dip in quality a la Tokyo Ghoul or it can pick itself back up a la Attack on Titan. You know, Attack on Titan is as relevant now as it has ever been, even coming off the back of a shaky second season because season three delivered. So like, it's kind of at a crossroads right now. 50% of what we've got has been awesome. 50% has been suboptimal. So I'm willing to go on the side of bring on more. I disagree a little bit. I think Taka hit it on the nail of the head when he said that when you reduce it down to its basic factors, it really is a one gimmick show. And that doesn't mean one gimmick shows are bad. Cowboy Bebop was a one gimmick show to some degree. And I just feel like, could you have told the story without Saitama? 
Sure. And that's what the show is going to have to be because the very nature of him makes the show somewhat uninteresting. I mean, I'm willing to be proven wrong, but I think that going forward, unlike Attack on Titan, which still had this whole mystery, but like Taka said, like after season one, I was completely done. I was good. I was happy. I thought it was great. And I don't know if the premise can hold up to more stories or if it is, you're just going to have to get rid of the main character. And I think one kind of realized that as writing past the first season, the focus was definitely shifted away from Saitama. And he was more of like this gag character that would show up and he wasn't even really in every episode. And I see some people online going, well, you know, it didn't have Saitama. So what's the point in watching this? Well, that is the point, right? At this point, it's not about Saitama. It was about Garo. And if we're going to get a story about Garo, great, give it to me. I think this season would have been a little bit stronger if they had leaned into that more and focused more on this character. Because by the end of it, I was firmly in the camp of let's go Garo. I was ready to see that happen. And now it's like, if we're going to have to wait for season three, then something is off, right? The pacing was off. Did we really need a tournament arc just watching Saitama one punch a bunch of martial artists and keep a wig on? No, I don't think so. That was a bit of a waste of time, I think. There were moments where this season shined, and I think those would have shined a lot brighter had this been done by Madhouse and the previous production crew. But even then, I think this season two probably would have just fallen a little bit short of where season one would have been. It would have been great and it would have been better than what it is right now. But there's something missing as you continue with One Punch Man. And we'll see if they can bring it back. It's all up in the air right now, season three. We don't know if it's going to be JC Staff, Madhouse, or if it's just going to drift away into the ether. If I was Madhouse, I wouldn't touch this with a 10 foot stick. You can be like, well, we did great on season one. It's sort of faced with the conundrum of any joke, really. It's never as funny the second time around. Yeah. With the premise being what it is, it was always going to be very difficult for the show going forward into future seasons where, you know, if everything was the same, it was Madhouse, same director, everything, and it just followed the tried and trusted method of the show, people would start to complain that it's samey, right? Yeah. Like, I've seen this before. It's the same old song and dance. And even though it is a parody and it's rooting this comedy, there's a certain point in time where it's kind of faced with this weird existential moment where it either needs to adapt and become the thing that's parodying almost. Yeah. yeah. Or continue to be a parody parody and not be funny anymore because like the easy way to solve this would have been to just become a regular shonen and it almost felt like that right it like did, by the end parts. of it with Garo fighting his master it was just like well is this even a parody anymore or is this just the next big shonen fight it would have been interesting for me if they had completely set it in the same world but lean into generals or lean into Garo and go a different direction but I just think the gag of Saitama being one punch man and that interesting deconstruction idea we got it and I don't need to see it again I think you could have kept it going and you could have had a one punch thing. It could have went longer. I wonder if it would have worked like this. Do you remember Megamind? No. It was like a CG movie about a villain played by, I think it was Will Ferrell. He plays a villain. He's always trying to defeat Brad Pitt's character who was this Metro Man. He was like a Superman figure. And Metro Man became so powerful and so unbeatable and so OP that eventually he just retreated from society, faked his own death and went into self-imposed exile. Yeah, and I and could have seen something happen. You kind like of wonder that. if he was more of a stoic character, if he was a more intelligent character. Could that exit existential Christ that he went through in episode 9 have been more of the story itself. So it's less about him being cheered up after playing video games and just him retreating from the world. Because I'm kind of wondering if Blast is that character. Because we haven't seen Blast yet. We know Blast is strong enough to defeat basically everyone. He's stronger than Tetsumaki. Tetsumaki is absurdly powerful. Yeah. And if he is more powerful than her, it stands to reason that he has to be somewhere in the ballpark of a Saitama figure. I'm not saying he's one punch and kill, but if he is so powerful that no villain poses a threat to him and he has never been seen over the course of two seasons, is he the ghost of Saitama's future? Yeah. As in, he just retreats from society and gives up the whole hero shtick because it's just so tedious. That's how I think they rescue Saitama as a character. Because the problem I have with Saitama is he doesn't feel deep emotionally. And when you're so, so powerful and the fights become shallow because there's only one conclusion to them, there has to be some level of depth somewhere. Yeah, like some sort of philosophical or ideological struggle that he's going through. Like you said, we saw that a little bit in episode 9, but it was almost more King vocalizing it. Because he needs to be like a tragic comedic character. And right now he's still feeling feels a little bit too comedic. There is tragedy there and he's articulated that to some degree, but he's just so irreverent and so flippant and so shallow yeah. as an individual that it's hard to believe that he's really suffering. It doesn't feel like he's lost something or that he's just losing his humanity the same way Dr. Manhattan was in Watchmen. Watchmen. He's in that situation. He's absurdly powerful and it can still be funny and have him suffering from ennui. What could rescue the franchise going forward is this last character and then obviously what they do with Garo is going to be a big thing as well because if he continues to be a sympathetic force in this show that dominates quite a large part of the screen time I could watch more Garo 
Yeah. Sideline Saitama is no crime, right? People can still enjoy the series. It's going to lose a few people. Certain people are just there to hear that one note one more time. I just want to hear a variation of. But some of us want more from the series and turning itself into a darker comedy as opposed to this slapsticky thing that it is right now. There's nothing wrong with that as well. Like it has to grow and adapt and I'm actually excited to see how they grow and adapt or how they attempt to grow and adapt into later seasons. I'm not ready to shoot this and put blind the barn. I want to see where they go. This is a very fascinating mess they've got themselves into. Yeah, it's almost like this experiment, right? What happens at this point when you've kind of written yourself into a hole? How do you get out of it and make it engaging and still relevant? I will definitely give it another chance if season three manifests itself.